This is our homemade Super Monkey rocket motor. Fins on the bottom, nose cone on the top. We call this the Flying Monkey. Now before we begin, I want to give credit for this design. This is not my idea. I was watching one of my fellow YouTubers channels a while back and he was working on a project just like this. Now in his video he had the fins and the nose cone developed and he was specifically working on getting a motor to work properly. Well, specifically trying to get his motor to not explode. I'll put a link to his video down in the description. Now as soon as I saw that video I had a couple thoughts. The first one was, this is a perfect project for me. I already have several rocket motor designs that work great. All I need to do is make the fins and the nose cone and the project's done. But then it occurred to me, wait a minute, is this actually a stable design? Would this actually fly? Well to find out I opened up the open rocket software and I put in the design as accurately as possible and sure enough open rocket said it was a stable design. So I used Tinkercad to design the fins and the nose cone. I used the same basic shapes that I saw on my fellow YouTubers video. And that gave us the first Flying Monkey Rocket. Now I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking this is terribly dangerous. I've just basically created a rocket propelled lawn dart. Well, I can't really argue with that. You're right. I do have plans on how to develop a simple ejection and recovery system. But before putting in the time and effort for that, I really want to see proof of concept. I want to know that this is really going to fly. Also, understand that when we go out and launch things like this, everybody at the launch site has a designated safe location. So we took our first flying monkey out to the launch site, and here's what happened. That's a good one. That was awesome. That thing went fast and it went high. But there was one major problem. Maybe you noticed it. Here's the rocket after we launched it. Here's what it looked like before we launched it. Now, obviously the nose cone was destroyed when it pummeled into the ground, that was expected, but where's the rest of the fins? Now, these didn't break off when the rocket hit the ground. They were nowhere to be found, which means they broke off in the air. And I think we got it on video. Let me show you. Here's the rocket coming off the launch rod. It's flying great. The smoke trail behind the rocket is nice and consistent. All the way up until right here. You see a little wiggle in the smoke trail. Something happened. The rocket wiggled in the air. I think that is when the fins broke off. So I went back into Tinkercad and I doubled the thickness of the fins. So these new fins have a double thick wall and a 25% infill. Now they're certainly going to be stronger, but there's always the possibility that they're still going to shear off. Because of the way 3D printed parts are printed in layers, it could simply shear off at a layer just like this one did here. Well, the only way to find out is to go try it. Let's go check it out. Three, two, one. All right, that was a great launch. Everything went according to plan. So here's the rocket. 
Here's the impact crater about three feet away. The nose cone is, is just pummeled into pieces in there. That's expected. So the rocket came down perfectly nose first. Now we did find all the fins in this area. Um, they're spread out. That one's about 30 feet away over there. And then over in the opposite direction, we have one that's about 45 feet away. So we have about a 75 foot spread of debris between the fins but it looks like they all held together and they broke off when it hit the ground we say that because they're all nearby and all the fins have this dirt impact mark on them in some area so what we think happened is the rocket came down and when it hit the ground all the fins simply snapped off spun around hit the ground and bounced away a couple of them bounced fairly close about uh, four or five feet away from the impact and then the others are like i said 30 about 30 feet and about 45 feet that way so some significant impact bounce so let's uh head back to the shop and take a closer look at where we're going to go next all right so we had flying monkey number one fantastic flight but the fins broke off in flight flying monkey number two another spectacular flight and the fins appeared to hold together just fine right up until the point where it smashed into the ground so that brings us to flying monkey number three now i've used the same fin design as the fins used on flying monkey number two so hopefully those should hold together just fine the nose cone is now a multi-part system we have a sleeve that attaches on the top of the motor and the nose cone that fits into that now this is our apogee nose cone system so inside we have our egg timer apogee flight computer and on the bottom is our ejection charge and that brings us to the recovery system now you'll notice on the top of this motor i've installed an eye bolt that's so that we can attach the motor to the nose cone which then attaches to the recovery system now, when I first started this project, I was originally just planning on doing a simple streamer recovery. That would be several feet of this streamer tape just flapping behind the rocket as it's descending. The streamer recovery is typically used for very small, very lightweight rockets, like some really small Estes rockets. It's not really a good recovery system for something of this weight, but to be honest, I'm not really looking for a recovery system that's going to save this from any kind of damage when it hits the ground. I'm just looking for something that's going to orient the rocket so that it comes down fins first instead of nose first. But then I remembered that I had an old Estes parachute. This is a small 11 inch diameter plastic parachute from a small Estes rocket. Now, it's really kind of undersized for this weight, but it would help to slow the descent rate down a little bit. And regardless of whether we choose to use a small parachute or streamer recovery, I think we're going to end up damaging at least one or more fins when it lands. And really, I'm okay with that. This was really just meant to be a fun project. And if I have to 3D print another set of fins every time I want to do this, I'm kind of okay with that. I'm not really sure whether I want to use the small parachute or the streamer system at this point. I'll have to give it a little more thought. I'll let you know when we get out to the launch site. All right, so what recovery system did I choose? The streamer or the Estes parachute? Well, neither. So I gave it some more thought and I really didn't like the streamer recovery. This is just too heavy for that. It's, it's just not a good system. And I had some real concerns about that Estes parachute. It's pretty weak and I was really concerned that some of those shroud lines would just get ripped out of the parachute when it ejects. So I decided to go with my own parachute. I made a 14 inch ripstop nylon parachute. And in order to fit that in there, I reprinted the sleeve portion here. It's a half inch taller than the one I was showing in the studio. So let's go try Flying Monkey number three. Three, two, one.
right, well, um, some parts of that were good, some parts were bad. Uh, it looks like the parachute ejected while the rocket was still moving upwards very fast. Uh, we ripped the shroud lines completely out of the canopy and the fabric is, well, it's a long ways that way. We have no idea where. So it also zippered the recovery cord right through the the 3D printed sleeve as well, which is another indication that the parachute ejected at high speed. So that's unfortunate, but amazingly enough, the nose cone completely destroyed, flight computer popped out, other than a little bit of damage on the battery connector, it is perfectly fine and still beeping the altitude, which says 3,162 feet. Now, we might have actually gotten higher than that. That would be 3,162 feet when it ejected the parachute. But again, the rocket was still moving pretty fast and still going up. So we could have reached over 3,000 feet. Uh, the fins are kind of scattered around here, uh, which tells us again that the fins seem to hold up fine, which is good. We've got a good fin design. Um, not really sure why the parachute would have ejected so early. Uh, we had pretty good venting in there. It should have had a good reading, but clearly um, we lost the parachute. Let's head back to the shop. Well, that was unfortunate. I watched all the video we have frame by frame, and I'm pretty sure that exactly three seconds after the rocket left the launch rod, I can see the puff of smoke from the ejection charge. Now, three seconds into the flight is way too early to eject the parachute, and this would have been moving at several hundred miles per hour at that point. The parachute had no chance. So why did the flight computer fire the ejection charge? Well, the flight computer works off of barometric pressure, so as long as the pressure keeps dropping, it knows that the rocket's still moving up. So at some point, it determined that the pressure was no longer dropping and fired the ejection charge. Could be a variety of reasons. Now, we did have the chamber vented. Could be that I didn't have enough venting. Could be just how the vents came out just under this sleeve piece, uh, causing some type of uh, venting problem. Could also be that the paracord got into the area where the vents are and blocked off one or both of the vents in there. Or it could be something that I haven't even thought of. But either way, it determined that the pressure was no longer dropping and fired the ejection charge. Now we could keep going with this project and keep trying more flying monkeys, but this was really meant to just be a fun project and I've already got more time invested in this than I really expected. So I think we're going to wrap this one up here. It was a fun project. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that like button before you leave and be sure you're subscribed to the channel. Check out the full selection of Rotary Rocketry t-shirts and hoodies. There's a link to our shop in the description. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Flying monkey rising up, no chains Fuel combustion in my veins Dreaming big, ain't no smart pipes